My name is Richard Pell and we are in the Center for Post-Natural History. The Center for Post-Natural History is a bit like a natural history museum. That is to say we exhibit uh, things that were living. Uh, however, the organisms that we're interested in are ones that have been shaped by human culture. So my background is in art. I went to school for art and I teach art. Uh, as an artist, I've always been interested in engineering. And then I started to learn about this genetic engineering. That's really where the genesis of this project came from was in wanting to learn about genetic engineering and being a little frustrated that there wasn't uh, a place like a zoo or a natural history museum where I could just go and see this stuff for real. The post-natural, uh, as we've defined it, refers to the, the living things that were intentionally altered by people through domestication, selective breeding, genetic engineering. One of the important parts of that is the intentionality. Uh, that this is the stuff we did on purpose and therefore we can kind of interpret it as a cultural work. Same way we look at architecture and try to learn something about a civilization based on that. Here in western Pennsylvania, giant pumpkins are kind of a, a big thing. Whereas we might go to Europe, maybe we're in Finland, uh, and in Finland there's, uh, there's a rat, not unlike this one, uh, that was bred to be alcoholic so that they could study treatments for alcoholism. Alcoholism is a big problem in Finland. So everywhere we go, these organisms are kind of telling a story about not just themselves, but about people and about culture. And that's really what this post-natural history is all about. Welcome to the Center for Post-Natural History. More than 10,000 years ago, humankind first succeeded at raising wild plants and animals in captivity. By breeding plants and animals for traits that we desire, humans also influence their evolutionary path. In doing so, we alter the form and function of the living world in surprising ways. It started off as a kind of a simple idea, maybe even an exhibit, something that would kind of travel around. I started looking at a lot of other museums for ideas uh, and learning about where museums come from and how they get started. And most of our largest institutions were, you know, originally started by one person. So it was really an awareness that, you know, other people had done this. People by themselves had started museums. That's a possible thing to do. It may be a crazy thing to do, but it is something that one can do. <laughs> people who come to the museum come from all sorts of backgrounds. We get scientists who run labs. We get anti-GMO activists um, who might protest what is going on in the lab. We get people who have never thought of this stuff before. We get people who uh, are organic farmers and they think very deeply about the history of the vegetables that they plant. That's really what we're about. We're about getting these people that maybe wouldn't be having a conversation like that between themselves to run into one another, to talk, um, and to leave with maybe one or two new things that they hadn't thought about before and maybe they want to learn more about. Pittsburgh is at the crossroads of a lot of really interesting histories that are relevant to the post-natural. It's not any one thing. Uh, here we are, we're kind of nestled between the Appalachian Plateau and kind of the great expanse of the American agricultural plains. We've got uh, this vast engineering tradition and biomedical uh, facilities and companies and buildings churning out ever increasingly new uh, research organisms uh, that, that typically aren't seen by the public, that exist only in the lab. And so here's a place where those organisms actually get kind of a moment to tell their own story.